hope you were with us yesterday because our special correspondent, uh, Cameron Matheson, told us all about his uh, struggle to overcome a rare and difficult childhood disease called Perthes. He spent four years in a massive brace, an experience that said really shaped you to the, be the person that you are today, and you really wanted to see and spend time with uh, young people that are going through it right now themselves. Exactly, Robin. I do. I know, obviously, what it was like for me and how much of a tough time I had wearing this brace decades ago and being so incredibly different from the other kids. But what I didn't know is what it's like today. So I spoke to some of the nation's leading experts on Perthes disease and watched how this generation of children is coping and healing. It's a great kid. My buddy, my best buddy. It's good. Luke Negrin has been through a lot in his seven years. Even though I'm two feet taller and a little bit older, we have more in common than you might think. We both had a degenerative bone disease called Perthes. Do you remember what that felt like when uh, you were limping around back then? Kind of blocked it all out. Yeah, I had it as a kid too, and I kind of blocked it out too. It's tough to remember that stuff. When I was around Luke's age, I spent four long years in a massive leg brace because of my Perthes disease. A normal hip joint has a ball and socket. With Perthes, for some unknown reason, blood stops flowing to the top of the ball part, the femur, and so it starts to degenerate. If you're diagnosed at a younger age, you have a better ability to remodel the femoral head. Six, seven years ago. When I decided to tell my story, I realized right. there was a lot I didn't know about the disease that had so affected my childhood. So I turned to my new friend Luke and to New York Presbyterian's Dr. Joshua Hyman to help me find out more. This is Luke's normal left hip. And what you will notice is that the, the head, the, the ball part, is round. On the affected side, you'll see quite clearly that Luke's femoral head is flatter. It's no longer round. How rare is it? It occurs probably on the order of uh, five out of 100,000 children. That sounds rare to me. It is rare. As it turns out, I was the classic patient. It normally affects boys between the ages of four and 10. And this brace that I was trapped in for so long, well, I discovered Perthes is treated completely differently these days. You don't use the braces in treatment anymore. I think that the, the, the usage of bracing has really dropped off considerably in the last, say, 10 years. So am I hearing that <laughs> I may have worn that brace for four years for no reason? Well, partly. There's little doubt, I think, today in the pediatric orthopedic community that um, immobilizing the children with Perthes is probably not the best thing for them. The mainstay of treatment is rest and physical therapy, or avoidance of impact activities in physical therapy. Today, kids like Luke are treated mostly in two ways. First, with physical therapy, and then, and this is the real hard part for a seven-year-old, they also have their movements restricted. Hey Luke, how is that for you not being able to run around and play all your, your favorite sports and games and stuff? I don't really like it. For most Perthes patients, that does the trick until the disease runs its course and the bone heals. Bring back again, go. But Luke's case was pretty severe and he actually needed surgery last fall to reshape his hip bone. It would alleviate the pain in his hip. It would put the ball joint back into the hip um, where it's supposed to be. For a month, he couldn't walk. He was in this big body brace, and boy, do I know how that feels. That body brace, what was that like? It felt really itchy. It felt really itchy? Was it a little frustrating, the fact that you couldn't run around, do stuff that you normally did? I didn't really like it when I had my brace on. It took something of a Christmas miracle to get him walking again. Santa Claus said to Luke, he said, listen, in order to get your presents, you had to walk from your bed to the Christmas tree to open your presents. On Christmas morning, he put down that walker that we had and walked his way to open up all his presents. He yep. kept your promise to Santa, right? Good job. But I bet you walking was the real present, wasn't it? That was mine. You want to see something? I got something to show you. This is what I looked like when I had leg Perthes disease. This is how I used to play soccer. I used to be goalie. The ball couldn't get past me. I was an awesome goalie. Oh! 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 And as I discovered, Luke's got some soccer skills of his own now. Oh! All right. This little boy who couldn't walk just a year ago. Oh! I'm okay. Now giving me a run for my money. Oh! Oh! 
Luke is giving you a run for your money right there. I think I was a better goalie when I was in my brace. <laughs> I'm not sure. The response, Cameron, has been tremendous when we showed your story yesterday. And there was one tweet. This is an example of the response that we received. Thanks so much for doing the story. My son was diagnosed one year ago. It gave me hope for his future. Were you shocked at the improvements, the advancements since you had this disease? Hey, first of all, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm so thrilled that that's sort of the message that got out from doing this piece, that's exactly what I was hoping for, for, for people to have a little bit of insight, a little bit of hope uh, for the future, as well as just the incredible joy to know that kids that don't have to go through what I went through for four years in this brace, it's no walk in the park, don't get me wrong, but they don't have to go through the emotional and the, and the physical struggles that, uh, that and I And you know certainly. what they can achieve. You know, exactly. I mean, Cameron and I played ball together. He's one of the most explosive leapers I've ever been around. <laughs> Do you think that having to deal with the restriction made you more dedicated, made you even a better athlete? I, I think what happened is just, you know, psychologically coming out of the brace, I really went to extremes to become super active, mm -hmm. to, to do these things almost to an extreme, and then, and, and then to really kind of realize that, you know, my happiness isn't based on just these external conditions and, and what you're able to do because I'm out of the brace, but really it has to start from within. So, yeah, I kind of went overboard, hopefully came back to reality a little bit so that I, you know, get the message out in a really positive way.